Welcome to another episode of Montana Shares, your opportunity to find out about the nonprofits that make our state so great. I'm your host, Bill Crane, and today I have Annie with Montana Wilderness Association. Welcome, Annie. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You bet. So we've had MWA on here before, mm -hmm. but let's bring people up to speed in case they didn't see that one. Tell us kind of the big level view of what MWA is all about. Well, the Montana Wilderness Association is a 501c3 nonprofit that works with communities throughout the state of Montana to protect wildlands in their corner of the state. We work with people from bikers to hikers to ranchers to outdoor enthusiasts. We really promote quiet recreation within wild places. We um, are also working with uh, people trying to get them to spend more time outside. We're getting them to um, take part in our current legislative processes that we have happening right now. And we're also working to um, protect land for future generations. Great. So what kind of are your current projects? You mentioned legislature, mm -hmm. but I'm sure you've got some other stuff going on right now. Yeah, our biggest uh, program that we have happening right now is probably winter wilderness walks. They're snowshoe adventures that take place all over the state. There's a lot of them that are happening here in Helena. If folks are interested, I encourage them to check out our website. But these, this is a program that happens in the summer and the winter, and we take nearly 1,500 folks out into wildlands near their home and let them experience a guided hike and maybe a waterfall or um, wildlife. There's all kinds of opportunities for education there as well. Mm -hmm. Through um, We have special wilderness walks and special areas such as wetlands to learn about the critters that are living there. We also have winter tracking wilderness walks where folks can go and learn how to track animals and see them in their natural environment, which is really exciting. That's, that's really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's a great way for people to connect with like-minded individuals and make friends. It's also a great way to promote a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So let's go a little deeper. I think it's important. People, these are free. Yeah, so free. you just mm -hmm. show up, kind of run a person through how they'd actually go out on a snowshoe yeah. walk. Just log on to our website. There's a tab that's labeled wilderness walks and just click on it and then you can see all of the walks that we have throughout the state and by date and location, how hard they are strenuous wise, how many miles and kind of what you'll get out of the hike. And then from there, once you've chose one, you just go to our sign up form, which is also on our website, and just type in your contact information and we'll contact you from there. Okay. But basically, you provide the snowshoes. We provide poles, everything. You just got to show up. Show up and mm -hmm. go You out don't need fun. to be a member either to come on our walks, which is really exciting for some. But we also welcome the opportunity for you to join as a member at those Take walks that. as well. <laughs> yes. So, what other campaigns and stuff do you have going on right now? Um, uh, at the forefront of our agenda right now is our Public Lands and Public Hands campaign. We call that PLPH for short. And that is a campaign that is derived from just a group of community members that are, um, excuse me, very interested in our public lands and want to take action. And that group meets regularly. And currently, our staff is working on pushing an agenda through to our state legislature to refund Habitat Montana and to open an office of outdoor recreation, which the governor is also championing right now. Mm -hmm. So we're focused on seeing that through till the end. And that is um, done through our PLPH campaign. And furthermore, we're hosting a huge rally at the Capitol on January 30th, which is on a Monday at noon, for a rally for public lands in Montana. And we encourage everyone to come and show up and take a stand for their favorite places throughout the state. And this will be a very big event, and it will be a great event for you to contact your local legislator if you are interested or to learn more about what you can do to save our public lands here in Montana. Great. And I think something that's important is is that you guys work with everybody. You we work do. with the ranchers mm -hmm. and you work with snowmobile people. And, mm -hmm. and so it isn't like you're, you want to take all that away from those people. You just want to no. have different places for it. You want to talk a little bit more about sort of the collaborative aspect of what you do? Yeah, MWA has a huge focus on partnerships and we recognize that it takes a lot longer for things to be done if you do it yourself. Mm -hmm. So we find that it's much easier to work with like-minded groups, not only like-minded groups, but groups that just love the landscape like we do and we recognize that Montana's landscape has room for everyone. It has room for the ATVist and it has room for the hiker and it also has room for the hunter and we support all of those groups and we welcome them to find their place in our environment and we welcome them to protect it and call it their own and to take pride in that place whether they ride snowmobiles or they like to take their kids fishing. We encompass all types of recreation. Perfect. So what else do you have we can look forward to in 2017? 
Well, um, Wild Fest is our biggest event of the year. It happens every September, and I'm already getting excited <laughs> about it. It's really fun. We're going to have great music and bands playing, and it's hosted in Missoula this year. Okay. It's a traveling event that travels to all the major cities in Montana, and this year we're excited to be in Missoula. And we'll have one day that is more um, policy-based where folks can come and learn about wilderness, and there's also kids' activities. And then the next day will be more of a party with like food and a beer truck and outdoor music and fun. And that's mm -hmm. like our biggest way to say thank you to our members every year. We like it to be an all-inclusive event for all ages and all economic statuses. It's not a fundraising gala. We do have a fundraising gala that we're also looking forward to in September that you can also attend for a ticket price and you can support MWA monetarily at that event. Mm -hmm. But Wild Fest is mainly just as a celebration to celebrate all the champions that we have fighting for wild lands across Montana. And where is that going to be held in Missoula? We actually aren't sure yet. We're deciding between be two <laughs> great locations and no matter what, we'll have an outside venue and an indoor option just in case of weather. But mm -hmm. we're hoping that it'll be somewhere that's accessible to all. Great. Now, you're kind of new. This is going to be I'm very new. You're very new. <laughs> but what, what's, what brought you to the organization? What are you passionate oh, about? I'm an angler at heart. I mean, I grew mm -hmm. up as a fishing guide. I take every opportunity that I can to experience our fantastic clean and cold waterways. So what drew me to the Montana Wilderness Association was that they really champion public access. And mm -hmm. as you probably know, public access is a huge deal to all anglers and getting on the water can sometimes be a struggle. So I first became involved with the Montana Wilderness Association working through another like-minded environmental nonprofit and got to partner with them on some of my work with them and just kind of realized that MWA would be another great fit for me and a chance for me to be passionate about wildlands through my work and to enjoy going to work every day. So great. I'm very, very lucky to have the job that I have. Cool. Yeah, I like access is big because I mm -hmm. like to kayak. Yeah, exactly. I don't exactly. care about fishing particularly, mm -hmm. but I like getting on the water so I can kind of find the common ground there with you. Yeah. So what can people do to help MWA be involved with mm -hmm. what you're working on? Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, there's a spot for everyone in MWA. I will start by saying that. We always mm -hmm. need volunteer help. So if you're bored and you don't have anything to do, I could greatly utilize you in many ways from like wilderness, wildlife, or wilderness tracking, wildlife tracking, and stuffing letters. You know, we have a whole variety of options for people that want to volunteer. Mm -hmm. You can also become more involved by joining MWA and becoming a member at $40. That will get you access to free, or excuse me, that will get you um, first come access to our wilderness walk so you'll get to sign up two weeks later than people that are non-members mm -hmm. which is a huge benefit to a lot of folks that are involved with MWA because they really love the wilderness walks program mm -hmm. and also by becoming a member you receive all of our communications which includes our quarterly newsletter and our email communications and our in event invites but you can also just become involved with the Montana Wilderness Association by, sh Association by showing up to our events. We mm -hmm. host a lot of events across the state. We probably have two or three events a month um, in various cities. Uh, just recently in Helena, we had a w wildlife tracking seminar at the, um, excuse me, Wild Montana building where people could come and look at wildlife tracks and learn about um, p where wildlife live and how to track them and find them and see them in their natural environment. So I guess just watch our calendar and our Facebook page. We're very active on social media and there's all kinds of opportunities for folks to get involved through there. Okay. So without giving up your favorite fishing hole or anything, <laughs> give us a couple of your, your favorite, two of your favorite places in Montana to be out Oh there. gosh. Well, recently I traveled to the Nevada Mountain area, which is over by Helmville and Avon right. area, very close to Helena. It's beautiful and it's a not very popular area for like hiking and backpacking and such. So, you know, you don't see anyone, which is one of my favorite things about right. being in the wilderness and the wild in general, wild places, is that they're so quiet and they're open to everyone and you can pretty much get anything out of it that you want. So I've been really exploring the Nevada Creek area and I really like it and it's beautiful and it's actually um, a recommended area for protection. So like mm -hmm. right now, we're really trying to get folks out there so they can see its natural beauty and what it brings to the table as for a wilderness and we really hope that Someday it can be protected. And then I guess my second favorite place that I've traveled to this last summer was the Crazy Mountains. Mm -hmm. I did a backpack trip with my coworkers. We do a staff back 
backpack trip every year to kind of promote team bonding. And we did the Crazy Mountain Crossing, which was a very challenging <laughs> backpack trip where you cross like two mountain or two huge mountain passes and it was almost 30 miles and my toenails actually fell off during the trip <laughs> and I had to hike out in my sandals, but it was a really great experience. And the Crazy Mountains are an island range, which is very unique and we don't have a lot of island ranges close to Helena, so it was great for me to see that and experience that. And it's also part of the Lewis and Clark National Forest, which is crazy to me because they're so far away from here. Right. And it also just goes to show that, you know, these areas that we hear about are accessible and we just need to go visit them. And visiting the Crazy Mountains was a very, very humbling experience for me. Yeah. And to know that I have a hand in um, making that place protected for future generations. Great. So what haven't we covered? Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm just gonna say again, please come to our public lands rally on January 30th at noon. It's a very big deal as we all know with the political climate right now, um, environmental organizations have a challenge and we're ready and we're remaining hopeful and we're excited for what's to come and we're excited to know how everything's gonna play out over the next four years and we're just ready, we're ready to fight and we hope that you come to our public lands rally. Perfect, that mm -hmm. sounds like a good thing to wrap up on. Yeah. So thanks for coming on to the show today. Yeah, thank you. And thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you in a couple more weeks.